Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to my next Behind the Song series. We're talking about the song Talk to Myself that I wrote with these beautiful ladies. This is Risa Binder and Jen Grinnell, I guess, is on this side. So we are doing this in a very unconventional format because Jen is currently in Portland. Portland. Yeah, I was going to say that. I just can't ever keep up with you. <laughs> and so uh, we found this new technology that enables this. And so I'm glad that you can join us. How are you, Jen? Caffeinating. How are you? <laughs> Caffeinating. Caffeinating. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so this feels like a very special episode because this song, Talk to Myself, is seeming to be the favorite song on the record by quite a big, you know, margin, which it's one of my favorite ones for sure. I just didn't realize how much people would be responding to it. And so cool for us, I guess. Yeah. Is that, I'm like, well, it's, clap it out. <laughs> say it. it's a hat. for ourselves. <laughs> So I think people are very curious about like, you know, where the song come from and like anything we can all three of us collectively remember from that day, because you know, those things, as you know, those writing sessions happen and you kind of like can't remember what was what, especially I feel like when it goes well, you can't remember it, well, which I is the opposite, right? Like when it goes badly, you're like, oh, that was rough. But that was so easy that day that it, it was really easy. And what I remember, and you can tell me differently is that basically, this was the first time we, the three of us had ever written True together. story. And that you had the idea that you brought in, but it's such a universal idea. And um, especially, well, I think for every single person, but being an artist, especially the roller coaster ride of it and the things we say to ourselves, um, that it just really hit me at my core. And I was so excited to see what we would end up with in the room. And it really did happen really easily. Wouldn't you say? I, I think it's so. Not all, it's not always like that. It's not always no. easy. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. It was Zarni was like, I have this idea. It was totally Zarni's idea. Yeah. And then we were all, the three of us were like, and therapy session. That's <laughs> <I remember>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I had been, I had walked Teddy early that morning. And funny enough, I was listening to a podcast. I think it was uh, the and the writer is podcast, I which that. I often listen to, and it was. Now, of course, I can't remember. It was uh, one of the producers. I'm shooting myself for not being able to remember, but they were talking about um, kind of this idea of like how we're really mean to ourselves, and it was weird because I had had this idea of like how much nicer I am to other people than I am to myself for a want for a long time, and been wanting to write it. But that morning, hearing these two very successful like hit writers talk about the same thing, it was kind of like the permission I needed to be like, okay, so I can say this, you know, and other people will feel it. Don't you love that? Like when some kind of morning ritual, like grabbing a coffee or hearing something where it feels like it's speaking directly to your heart. Mm -hmm. And like, that was a, I feel like a sign for you that morning, exactly what you're right. saying. Like time to write this. Time to write this. Well, and I luckily had you guys on the books and like, to be honest, I, if you were a combination of other people, I, I would have, I did want to save that idea for people that I knew could get with, not only like get with it, but Relate. like, advance it. yeah, because I mean, there are people I would have pitched that to, and they would have said like, that's cool. But like, they wouldn't have gotten so excited about it as you guys did. And so I know Jen really well. And I felt like I kind of knew you instantly pretty well, but like, I don't know. It just, it worked out great that it was the, the three of us, you know? It did. And it was something where even, first of all, I just have to kind of sing your praises for a second because we had just met. This is how I remember it. <laughs> we finished the song. I'm like, I think this could be good. And Zarni was like, you know, I'm just going to demo this and just get it out to you. And the next day <laughs> it sounded like gold to me. I was like, <laughs> and I, I think I called you and I was like, who is this girl again? I mean, she's like, young. I oh my God. Know. So like, <laughs> Your skill set is something oh, that I so just sweet. so admire. Just have to say that. Thank but um, well, did yeah. it. But, but I, I couldn't stop that. listening to the words, the words, and what you did with the music. I feel fit each other so well. The yeah. mood that you set, and what we're saying, they they they're married. Like I just love listening to it. Well, <laughs> I I can't like I appreciate saying that, but obviously like I you know can't take all the credit for that. Like I. 
I forget yes, how we wrote the melody that day. No. Take no. the credit. <laughs> Take the credit. Okay, fine, fine. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I actually do remember that being a challenge of that day. I don't know if you guys, if you guys remember this, but the lyrics I felt like were pretty quick that day when we were coming up with the list of stuff, <laughs> the list of stuff that we're mean, that we say that's mean to ourselves no. came very easily. I was like, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, this is funny because I was just at home in Maryland this past week and I was talking to my sister who's a school teacher and she was, remember, there's some podcast she listens to about a, by a woman named Sark who's like a very positive thinking person and going back to the things we say to ourselves, it's like, why do we remember m mostly the traumatic things or the things that are, are that block us rather mm -hmm. than celebrate? Why don't we look back more and celebrate our successes, but we don't yeah, yeah. like, uh, you know, and so I don't know, but I feel like this yeah. song kind of speaks to that. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think that's why I love it so much. I was the same way where we wrote it and it was easy, but then when you made the arrangement, I was like, Ooh, the arrangement's like super cool and unique. And I love that combination of things. But then I also thought this is a song that is, I hope so helpful for people because it, maybe they've never like had that moment of clarity where they're like, Oh my God, <laughs> I do, I do exactly that. And I, I love that idea. And I, I think that's why it connects so much with people is because maybe they've never thought about it in those terms. Yeah. Well, I guess like the hope was that, well, we, we were kind of worried that cause it comes out the gates, like a little brutal to the point where you're like, <laughs> if you don't know where it's going, like, I wonder if people perceived it like this, you're like, what, who talks to people like that? And I guess that was like the shock factor we were going for because you're supposed to have that like wow that's super mean and not acceptable you're supposed to like block those thoughts and then when you realize oh wait a minute like I find it perfectly acceptable to say them to myself like there's something about that but I remember the challenge with that song that day for me anyway was like because I think we were writing it at our office at SNG and I was sitting at the piano and I mean this is a common struggle it's like how do you make it the music cool because I I remember we were kind of like could we put it in like a Sam Smith world right but then like I was leaning like a little too <laughs> gospelly at a time I remember us like circling around that melody and then like tweaking it for like yeah. ever I have this memory of Jen standing here to my right at the piano <laughs> Oh, and like us being like this note, <laughs> we were like all these different like melody notes, yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. a struggle. Yeah, I remember that. But I remember, I think it was the ch literally a change of one chord progression. You're like, I can't remember what the chord was, but then immediately you were like, that's that's it, that's it. The, but it did take us a minute. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, that was a struggle. But is that like was that process? What are your guys's typical? songwriting processes are you do you like when they happen together music lyrics do you like having a second to do the lyrics melody you go then you go oh. um what happened when we were in the room together is from in my opinion like the ultimate because there was an ease about it and whenever there's silence like trying to think or whatever it never felt forced or awkward or anything like that my preference is kind of doing what we did like we had the base of an idea and I actually really love what we did because I feel like we did a map of it even before we had mm. lyrics especially when you were like the list of things what are the things people say to themselves I'm never going to get to the top all these different ideas you know and then the melody came right. almost secondary yeah yeah I guess and that's that, true. that was kind of really cool um so I don't know if I answered your question no, but you that, that felt easy what about you tell us Jen um I don't I think I don't do co-writes as often as you guys do. So sometimes I think they're painful. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, so do we, it's fine. Um, and I was like, I remember just thinking like, that it was just like an ideal morning. Cause I was like, um, we just made something, but really I just hung out with friends for a few hours. Like, oh yeah, that's true. That's true. True story, that makes a big difference. Yeah, and so I was like, did something, finished something. It was great. And then the next day was the same thing where I was like, that was really good. <laughs> so co-writing, like, I mean, maybe this is difficult to answer on the spot, but like what, what about co-writing is like, 
I guess two part question, challenging for you and then beneficial for you. Like, what does it push you to do that? Cause you write so much by yourself that like, what, what do you feel like it does for you? Um, I think it just pushes me to make decisions because I, mm -hmm. I don't know instantly if I like something or not. I'm such oh. a slow processing person. Like I'm so often will write something and then go back to it a month later and be like, Oh, that's good. Or, Oh, that sucks. You know, oh. I don't, I don't know in the moment how I feel generally okay um, and that makes it really hard when you're sitting in a room and you're like let's get stuff done you know so I think that's why I find the co-writing process really hard and um I think it also just it, it's, it's kind of like dating too you know I say that all the time in my yeah. shows I say that it's totally dating um it, you know it's a it, 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 place to be and I don't know but there's a humor in it. There's a, you can, at least I find the humor in it because I'm like, yeah, okay, if this sucks for some reason, I may never have to see you again. Just like, <laughs> but hopefully. I'll call you. I'll call you. <laughs> but so does it, is it safe to say that like what challenges you with co-writing is also what you like about it? Is it kind of like a, a hand in hand thing? Like it forces you to make. Totally, totally. Because, uh, and this is what I found lately too is like songwriting it's so freaking lonely to write by yourself mm -hmm. <laughs> it's lonely all the time and so what I love is the collaboration and I love that somebody is sitting there going like no this is good yes that's great next 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 you know which is what you guys I felt definitely did in that you were like nope this is good right next what's the next thing we need you know like you knew instantly what was great and it was like it's just it's a joy to just hang out with friends and then and have that fun and then be like and we made something cool so right. it was kind of like the ideal scenario i yeah i, I agree hang, the hanging out with friends part for sure i think it's i think it's interesting that you find it like that you write by yourself so much and that you say that your challenge is like making decisions because obviously when you're writing by yourself you're the one making all the decisions so is it just that <laughs> hmm, so you do it over time though you give yourself enough time i guess to check your decision making versus like yeah. co-write it has to be on the fly like yes I like that don't I like I don't like that yeah yeah I'm just slow yeah. I'm slow but it's lonely so I'm I... <laughs> this is sad that's sad that sounds like a country song <laughs> I'm slow but lonely. I, I'm pretty I I'm wanted... slow too I'm not a fast writer like I've written with people who are very very fast like lyrically and and I'm not, I don't consider myself one of those people. I feel like what it is takes your me. process? Like what, what comes first for you or ideas, melody? I or? mean, I, since I lived in Nashville, I don't know. I almost don't remember what it used to be, but since I've lived here and the longer I live here, like this filter is getting even like tighter. But if I don't have like an idea or something about the idea to latch onto, like I cannot get started. Like, I don't even want to get started almost. It's like, I can't. So if fundamentally, I'm not, I don't align with the idea. I, I just, you know, I can't do it. So I need like, A, the idea to be there. And then B, to kind of map it out the way we did. Because sometimes too, I've found that like, even if you think the idea is super cool up front, which this happens to me all the time, I run it through and I'm like, ah, it's, not wor it's not worth three minutes. Like maybe wow. this idea is like, I know that's like super brutal, no, but no, no. sometimes it's like a moment. Like maybe that idea is like a really cool moment in a verse or like a really cool moment in a bridge. I guess like for me, I'm trying to get a lot better about like, I don't think that's, you know. And I mean, there's songs on my record that I'll admit, I don't think are like crazy good ideas. Like yeah. honestly, there's several on them where I'm like, yeah, the idea is okay. But like, I really, I did it for a different purpose, you know, but I guess like when it comes to writing for other people and for pitch and when you have to turn stuff into a publisher, that filters like even tighter. Cause I'm not going to waste their time with an idea that's like, yeah, that's cool. Or like you just wrote a three minute song about an idea that could have been like a line of a verse. Like that's never, do you know what I mean? Do you now know, like, I don't know how long you've been at SMG, but like, do you, are you able to now kind of filter out ideas based on what you think you know that your colleagues will like and not like? Like, are you, I'm just asking. I think so. Okay, yeah. I mean, I still like, 
I still feel like I don't know like half the time what I'm doing, but I do, I, I have gathered a sense of like what their tastes are, but I'm still wrong sometimes. Like I didn't, About Talk To Myself is a perfectly example, a good example of me being wrong. That was the kind of song that we left and that day and like when I did the demo, my feeling was like, I don't really care who likes this or who doesn't <laughs> like it. Like I needed to write this and you know, I think we all needed to write it. Mm -hmm. But then I turned it in and it, it probably to date, it's one of their favorite songs, which is really strange because like, you know, I, they've, they've pitched it to a few people in the country realm and you know, I don't, obviously it's, it's not super country. So it's, we'll see what happens. But like, that was an interesting turn of events where they, you know, they're often saying like, do more of that. And really? I'm like, that's kind of a, that's a very strange request for me. Cause I'm like, really, you want, you want to open that can of worms because there's like a lot more. <laughs> well, yeah. And actually I have to say, share this too, cause I also think about how songs are healing, honestly. And mm -hmm. even a song like a, the way I talk to myself, which you wouldn't think would be healing necessarily by what the words are. When I met you that day, I was a new, new, new mom. Like I think my baby was like four months old and I was not okay. <laughs> um, and now I'm so okay. I'm like better than okay. And like to hear at your, at your release party, to hear it over the speakers that way, it reminded me of how far a human, a woman person body who's become a mom like can go. Like, wow. and so it's like really, I was like, oh wow. I remember from sitting and writing this to today, listening on the speakers, I'm like, I'm so much, I'm so much better. And oh, I was like, good. really, really, really cool. I'm glad. Just as far as like, you know, but I feel like songs, it's neat to think about the place you were at when you wrote something. And then, cause there's so much time sometimes between a, an idea of a song and the song actually coming out and where you are. Mm. That's, that's a good, yeah. Especially when you, when you're the one that's written them. And I'm sure people love all arts, like artists, like painters, movie writers like can look at where they were and and it's kind of like full circle for them too yeah i feel like moms yeah they must especially be hard on themselves it's not even i mean that's a whole nother like podcast. Whole nother thing <laughs> yeah i can't but imagine. but it's so cool now or whatever to give you just as even a just a person like giving myself so much more grace and room to just be and have no judgment just have a good day mm -hmm. and, you know live yeah. for that moment kind of a thing rather than there's just no more place for my brain to say like, especially being an artist and a mom, like you didn't hit this mark when you said you would, no, all the, the calendar dates and those things are out the door. Now when I'm in a room like you, with you girls, if I can come out with something I'm proud of, I had a great day. Right, right. And, no matter, and no matter what happens with that song, it was a great day, you yeah. know, like so. Do you feel like, do you guys at all feel like that, that song, and when we write songs that are kind of like our truth, do you feel like there's a little bit of like a strange form of accountability in it? Like if you've made this statement, you know, either like we have with this song or with other songs where you kind of are like taking a stand on something. Do you, as artists especially, do you feel a certain accountability to like live up to that mentality? Because if you've like, let's say you've been the poster child for like positivity and you're going <laughs> to be like being a little negative, like is that something that you deal with where you're like, well, I'm kind of like sending this message. Like, do your songs sometimes hold you to a higher standard? What would you say, <laughs> Jen? Um, I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of a song that I've written that that's like, I will be better, you know? Cause I feel like this song, I agree that it's, it's such a, the reason that we all enjoyed the process so much and we enjoyed the song so much is because it, it did feel like a, truth that we were writing about but I don't I think I also love that the song doesn't have like a definitive like I'm never gonna do that again it's yeah, just that's like a, a good point. That's it's a good just point. like a oh god like it's just this like realization of like this is this is I you know I think it will lead people to like I need to be kinder to myself but mm -hmm. um it doesn't make that definitive statement it's really more of this just like this journey through a realization that's like yeah you know, that's true. Like the realization is almost like the statement by, you know, kind of being like, wow, I do this kind of right. says I probably shouldn't do this without saying it. Exactly. I don't, I have a really hard time writing songs with that like conclusion. Like I will probably never write songs that have that. I can't get myself to like 
point that out. It just feels too like kumbaya i guess i'm like too much of a dark soul but that's why like. i like writing with you because i'm fortunately or for whatever i'm on the other end of the spectrum and people assume that unicorns and butterflies are gonna fly out of me which they do and that's fine so it's really cool to turn in a song that i'm like this song's a little bit darker and yeah. like, really i'm like it is, and it is. Like, oh, okay. yeah reese's over there wanting to do world peace i'm like no no world peace for you <laughs> But um, so Jen, do you have anything you have a project you're working yes. on? As we're gonna wrap up pretty soon, tell us about what's coming out for you. You also are working on stuff, so tell us what you guys are doing. Uh, let's see. I I've been working on a studio album for a freaking year, mm -hmm. and I finished it. Um, um the mastering. Uh, I guess I'm gonna finish today. Oh, and hey, um, that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go cut the lacquers to make vinyl records. And then I also, um, in the meantime, it was taking so long, I made a live record that I really like, and we're finishing that this week. And um, then this week, I'm also recording a record with uh, my BFF, Meredith K. Clark, we're recording that on Friday, and that'll be done uh, by the end of the month. So What kind of record is that? It's a lot. Um, it's, we're calling it Siren Songs, and mm -hmm. it's... Um, acoustic but like you know Meredith plays dulcimer and uh, viola mm -hmm. and um, yeah. banjo and stuff so it'll just be like two vocals and very um, kind of a throwback to the late 60s bohemian songwriter vibe and yes like, yeah like covers that we'll do in a different way and then um, and then just kind of my more folky old acoustic songs and can also you can imagine their voice their voices together doing that it's going to be unbelievable where can we find all of these things when they're done do you think how can we find and listen to your stuff on the interwebs i don't know oh, okay. <laughs> what is my talking point on the spotify i don't know uh we haven't figured out release stuff yet but um no. but i also wrote you know i wrote a musical and i stuck one of the songs from the musical on this record with me oh, oh, that's really cool <laughs> so i'm like crossing everything over that's all crossover. How about yeah. you? What are you working? Yeah, what are you guys doing? Um, I am. Mm, I've been writing a bunch for probably what will eventually be a project of mine, but I've been really enjoying co-writing with other people just to kind of see what comes up. Mm -hmm. I'm working on something that's super fun on the side. I'm. I'm just shooting a tv show just to do it right. i'm calling it sound bites and it's basically me running into restaurants in nashville that i feel are really great showing people my favorite bite even trying to make it but i make it terribly and they make it great <laughs> and then i bring in an artist to introduce to people and then they try a bite and then they spontaneously sing or rap or play an instrument about I love it. That. and it's so silly we actually just did one over at steam boys which is a dumpling place oh, nice. and I, I found a couple rappers to come and rap about dumplings <laughs> and it's really funny and i cannot i think it's funny i can't wait to see it so That's just funny. like other ways to i think i have to do those things to kind of draw more creativity to write more like mm. everything kind of feeds each, feeds each other, each other. Um, cool. so yeah what about you what are you working on well i'm just writing and writing and uh yeah i have just to your next project and others or i'm writing for others but i'm kind of pretending that i'm writing for the next record because i think it it produces better it's seeming to produce better results for what gets pitched from my publisher oh that's cool when i pretend it's for me it tends to go better they like it more so it's kind of a weird trend but i so i'm pretending i'm writing for the next record and maybe writing for the next record who knows but Thank you guys so much for watching. Risa Binder oh, and Jen Grinnells. If you don't follow them already, I'm gonna post their links. Uh, they're obviously bringing out some great new music. Thanks for watching. Uh, Talk to Myself is out on the interwebs. Uh, on Tidal. I'm so proud to be on that record. Woo! <laughs> Your record is Tidal amazing. Way. Thank you, thank you. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate your guys' support. And thanks Jen for phoning in all the way from Portland. Um, I love you both. We love you. Thanks for being you on. Bye, everybody. Bye.